talked about adding the moon to those shots. The funny part about that is that when the first day I came to Dustin, uh, I got here at night and I was driving around like an idiot. Um, I checked into the hotel and I'm like, okay, I'm going go to go to the beach. It's the middle of the night. I'm going to go to the beach. Well, if you've never been to Destin before and you're driving up and down 98, you don't see no beach. You see a lot of tall buildings, but you see no freaking beach. So I kept driving down 98. I went over the bridge in Opelousa Island. I didn't realize that I was on an island, but all I could see was pitch dark. I still didn't see no beach. So I'm driving back. I turned around, driving back. And right before I came to the bridge, I see the Emerald Grand, and I realized that there's a little, you know, driveway that goes down right across from the Emerald Grand. You guys probably all know exactly what I'm talking about. So that night, I drive down that thing, and there was a security guy. I guess he was an Air Force security guy or something. I said, hey, is it cool if I photograph here? He said, yeah. And, you know, I had my camera and tripod and all, um, and, and I, I was a, a hobbyist. So I set it all up and did a long exposure shot of the Emerald Grand. It was impressive. The water was all silky and everything in my long exposure. Well, I got home and I remembered Scott Kelby and I remembered the moon from those postcards and all. So I took a full moon, you know, I Googled full moon, got a black and white picture, put that bad boy in the shot and thought, wow, that's cool, printed it. A couple of days later, I take the print to work because I'm going to hang it in my office, you know. The owner comes in and goes, Man, that's cool. I've never seen anything like that. How much you want for it? I'm like, I don't know. I have 25 bucks. She's like, you know, gives me 25 bucks. One of my very first print sales was from this composite. Um, a composite is a combination of any two pictures. Now you'll see the moon right here. And that's how cameras work. I got a nice couple uh, in focus. This is one of my uh, go-to poses that I stole from Mary. And uh, what I do when I'm out on the beach and I see this situation, and it's, it's actually kind of funny, I uh, tell the bride and groom, well, I gotta get a shot with that moon in the background. And they're all, yeah, let's do that. So then I take a shot like this with a, a white blur in the background, you know, a white dot. Um, and then, I take and get rid of the white dot. And you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and do it to show you how it's done. Not that it's all that difficult. But you can take any of your, your cloning tools and get the white dot. Actually, you can't do it on a, a background layer, so you've got to unlock it. Now I've gotten rid of the moon. So then I go on to Google and say, what was the phase of the moon on September 24th? And Google says, a waxing glubius, whatever the hell that is. <laughs> so then I, you know, I do a Google search for a waxing glubius, and I find one, and then I place it into the photo. And there's the waxing glubius. So of course then you just resize it, down about where you want it. I think I like this guy a little rounder, maybe a little smaller. Spin it around some. Put him where I think it would look good in the composition. Because luckily the couple had their back to the moon, so they don't know. <laughs> Change my blend mode. Anybody know what blend mode I would use? Change my blend mode to screen. Get rid of all the dark. And there I got my couple with their waxing glubius. Now the problem, of course, is that the blend mode didn't get rid of all of it. So then I would put a mask on it. And actually, let me, uh, this must have been before the last time I saw it. Mr. Radai, because I got a little sensor spot right there. Um, but then using a black brush, and the shortcut for your brush is B, B for brush. And I'm at 90% opacity, 100% flow in black. So then I just take out a little bit of an edge.
And of course, you know, if you want to, you can sharpen it and all kinds of stuff. This is the one I did earlier today when I was setting this up. And uh, what I did was use the curves adjustment on it just to give it a little bit more detail. You can see there. Now, do you guys know about clipping masks? A clipping mask takes the effect that you're working with and clips it or restricts it to the, to the layer below it. To, to do a clipping mask and, and to know you're, you're using one, see this little arrow right here? That arrow tells you that that, that layer is clipped to the one below it. So I'm going to unclip it. Okay, so now the curves adjustment, you see that the, the bride and groom have got a little bit more contrasty. The curves adjustment is affecting the whole composite. Using the clipping mask, there's two ways to do it. You take your, your pointer and put it right in between the two layers, the one that's the effect and the one you want to clip it to. Hold down your Alt key. See how that changed into an arrow pointing downwards? When you clip, when you click, you've now clipped it. You can see that the, the bride's face has gone back to normal. The moon stayed the same. In other words, that curves adjustment only applies to the moon. That's the way. Yes. How did you create a clipping mask? Um, again, I chose. You know, I, you've got to have the item that you want to have affected by the adjustment directly below the adjustment. You. Put your, your pointer right in between the two, hold down the Alt key, you see how the, the cursor changed, and when you click, oops, there you go, you get the, the clipping mask. That's, that's the old fashioned way to do it. The new way to do it, which I don't know what version of Photoshop this came out in, but 99%, matter of fact, I think all, but I haven't found one that doesn't have it yet, of your adjustments, have the clipping mask option right here. So when you right, where, where, I'm sorry. Yeah. see that curves? That's the curves property box. There's a clipping mask box, uh, box right here. When you hit it, and again, if you look at the original layer, so you have to, okay, so you have the layer, the object that you're adjusting, and then you have a layer above that. Which is the actual adjustment layer. Which is the actual adjustment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your moon was below it, the next layer was the... Uh, curves. Okay, curves, that's right. So then, while on, while on the curves layer, mm -hmm. you hit that clipping mask. Yep. Okay. Fine. And like I said, for some reason, if the adjustment doesn't have it, or you're using an older version of Photoshop, all you got to do is put your cursor right in between the two. And by the way, this is how you unclip. Hold the uh, Option key down, or the Alt key down, and click again. You see I unclipped it, and I clipped it, unclipped it, unclipped it. And that works with hue saturation, with levels, all of that stuff. And again, that technique is a tool that you will use a lot in compositing, especially something like, uh, you know, filters. Um, you know, warming, like a lot of times one object will be too warm and I'm trying to composite it into something that's a little cooler, well I'll do a warming filter, like uh, this guy here, the little camera guy. You can see now the whole scene is warmed. Well, I hit the clipping mask and only the moon has been warmed. I wouldn't do it in this scenario because the, the moon isn't warm, but you can imagine that, again, when you're doing a composite, uh, the, the, the white balance is going to be different in all the different objects that you're, you're using and that's one technique of warming up one object or cooling it. You can use you know that, that same photo filter and go to a cooling filter rather than you know a warming filter um, to help equalize the picture. So, bottom line is you get a picture that you want to add the moon to and um, cut out the moon. You know, make sure you've uh, you've got a black background. Drop it on there. Hit your blend mode. Go to screen, and all of a sudden you've got the moon and the moon only. Um, if you need to trim it a little bit, add a layer mask to it, and then just paint out whatever excess that you don't want out with your layer mask. See, you can go home and do that. 
and now you've created your first composite. Two pictures, right? <laughs> Two pictures combined to make one. Let's see what else we got. Okay, I'm going to show this one. This is uh, a little bit more of an advanced technique, but you know, it's, it's it's getting to where it's kind of a commonplace technique. Um, and basically, what you've got is a woman with blonde hair against a black background. Now, it's tougher, but there is a way to do this with someone that has dark hair if they're against a light background. I talk about it some in your little handout. But when you look at Photoshop, you know, I look at it as a toolbox. There are a zillion different tools in that box. I don't know how to use them all. I know how to use the ones that pertain to what I do. But things like 3D and typography, I knew my way around it, but I'm a little lost. This kind of stuff, picture, you know, touching up photography stuff, I know because I do it all the time. Um, and when you're trying to achieve a goal, whether that's a, you know, a composite or a blending of color or whatever, you've got to, you know, you've got to know that there's 10 or 12 different ways to do it. With experience, you'll know which is the best way to do it, is by looking at a picture. With that experience, you'll do what we all do, you'll, you know, experiment until you figure it out. But knowing that that tool is available to you is, is the battle, you know, that's, that's the hard part. Now, was this background already black? Yes. This is a stock picture I downloaded off Google, and I just ran blonde against a dark background, and that's what I got. Um, I'm going to give you a composite that doesn't make any sense, um, because I don't really care if it does or not. All I want to do is show you this technique. So I'm going to get rid of the blonde, my little filter, filter and I got a, a picture of New York, and it's a r relatively dark picture. So I want to put the blonde in there, but as you can see from her picture, cutting out her hair, you know, I don't ever like to say that anything, look at these new glasses by the way, so I'm about to have wine. I don't like to say that anything's impossible in Photoshop, because there's people that just amaze me, uh, but it would be damn near impossible to cut out her hair, especially the part directly over her hand because they're, they're basically thin strands. Now, of course, this is a, an extreme example, and it's meant to be. Um, <clears throat> but basically, come on. I'm supposed to hit control one and center the, or control zero and center the picture in the frame. And of course, like uh, like always, Photoshop doesn't want to work when I'm showing off. <laughs> you can navigate your way around in the uh, in the, the window, by the way, by holding down your space bar, and that gives you your hand tool. Your hand tool allows you to move your picture around and all that. So anyway, here we got the blind looking at her uh, split end standing on the street in New York, and you want to make it look right. So this is again like the latest thing, using blend modes to uh, to composite. Control J. So you highlight the girl. Control J gives you a copy. I don't know if you saw my layer stack, but now I've got two pictures of the girl. I'm going to disable one and highlight or make active the one below it. And I'm going to again use a blend mode. And I'm going to use the same blend mode, screen. Now you see what's happened is the girl has uh, blended in, but entirely too much. You know, the, uh, the screen mode blended her face and everything else in. And that's why you have this layer on top. So let's activate it. Now we're going to hide it with the layer mask. Normally if you hit your, your layer mask icon down here, you get a white mask. That's the wrong layer, by the way, but you get a white mask. Uh, and a white mask won't do you any good in this situation. 
if you don't know, Control Z undo, undoes, undoes the last step you did. Uh, if you want to go back in steps, you hit Control Alt Z. Control Alt Z, Control Alt Z, Control Alt Z, and it'll go keep all going all the way back. Okay, so we got this girl here. She's in screen mode, the middle layer. The top mode, we're going to add a black layer mask to. Now you can add your white layer mask and fill it with black, or you can just hold down the Alt key and press the mask icon again, and that produces a black mask. Now with a white brush, and you can see I've got black as my, my forward color, my chosen color, hit the X key, and that swaps them. So I've got white now as the, as the forward color, or the, the front color. And I hit B to go to brush. And now this really gets tricky. I hit Alt and my right mouse key, and I can increase or decrease my brush size by going left to right, and I can increase or decrease the softness by going up and down. And I'm going to go to about a 400 pixel brush that's relatively soft. I'm going to set my flow and capacity to 100%. <coughs> and again, it's not working, but there it is. And then just start painting her back in. Now remember, you've got to have the mask selected over here. And as you paint white onto that mask, you're bringing back what was in that photo. And making her non-transparent again. Will you go through that sequence again real quickly? I didn't get it all. <laughs> Do much drawing? Yeah. Okay. Now let me uh, let me finish up what I'm doing. By the way, and I do this 10 times a day and I, and I know better, if you hit the shift key and the right, the right mouse button, you get this menu, which is basically the blend mode of the brush. Overlay, spot, you know, all that stuff. It's not what I was trying to do. I was trying to hold the edit key and reduce, or I'm sorry, the alt key and reduce the size of my brush and paint in here. Now, when I get over into the hairier, pardon the pun, areas of uh, this composite, I would use a little softer brush. Man, I hate glasses. Okay, so that's zero percent, so that's pretty soft. And paint over. Now again, X swaps colors. I think I painted a little bit too much. And maybe not. Oh, you know what it is? My opacity. I'm going to kick the opacity of the brush down. That's at 30 percent now. By pressing the three key, the opacity has gone down to 30%. And I will just get white, my four color, and just paint it back in. Um, and again, with these areas, you just got to kind of finesse it. But basically, I forgot about the thumb the last time, too. Okay, I've got to increase my opacity, so I'm going to go to 8, that's 80%. Okay, ah, okay. Paint in black on a black mask. Wondering why that wasn't working. Yeah, well, you know what? It works perfect when I'm at home in my underwear by myself at my desk. <laughs> I'm in front of a hundred people trying to act like I know what I'm doing is when Thanks stuff doesn't that. work. So. Yeah. We just ate. Yeah. Well, that's my official Photoshop, you know, uniform is my boxers. Now, again, I don't know if you're aware of it, but when you're painting, you can click once, hold down the shift key, click again, and you'll paint a straight line in between the two dots and that applies to 
any situation where you're painting, whether it's on a mask. Or again. You can click once and then pick another spot, click again, um, holding down the shift key, and you'll fill in the space in between with a straight line from the first click to the last click. That makes it a lot easier, like when you're painting the edges on a mask, if you're trying to paint the edges of a cutout. Right. Um, so anyway, without spending a lot of time finessing this, you see the result. You can see her hair. You can see through her hair. All the black is gone uh, that she was originally against. All around the edges. Uh, and I should have positioned her differently. Let me show you on the original. <coughs> I'm going to close this and then reopen the original because I saved it. Um, but using that same technique, I did I did this one earlier. And again, all the flyaway hairs are still there. She didn't have the helmet head. You can even read the West 37th Street sign through her flyaway hair. So where did I lose you, huh? It's okay. I'm so new at this. Don't don't go back. Oh, okay. Um, this is a little bit of an advanced technique, but I'm so excited about learning it um, that I had to show it off. Uh, believe it or not. This picture, which is my screensaver picture, I use the same technique on uh, to get all of this into the scene. Um, yeah, I'll go over. To make it work with darker hair, I cut out the edge, you know, the pieces that I wanted. I did a, a cut out like so. I converted it to black and white, used levels to, to give me a real big contrast between black and white threw it in there to the screen mode and then went back and painted it with the hair color and I did get some paint in between her hairs but then I used the blend option blend if uh, in the layers panel and blend if it wasn't white basically because the background was white or in screen mode it eliminated all the color in between the hairs I'll show you that in advanced class. But right. the point is, is it will work with dark hair. It's just a little tougher, and you have to have a good picture. Okay. So the purpose of, uh, in my head, I just want to get this straight. So the purpose of the screen, though, the screen layer mm -hmm. underneath is really just to give you, while that's you're painting back in, to give you that layer that, that's, so you can that's see what, what you're what, painting. That's what it is without the screen button. Right. Screen mode is giving me all the flyaways, all the edges. Right. Right. So that's where you're getting all that. Yeah. And it also gives you a guideline for painting it back in. Yeah. You're able to see sure. that as your. Okay. Absolutely. But like I said, in CS or. Show, the, show it without the screen mode up close like that. Yeah. In CS or Photoshop 7, that would have been impossible to do. In fact, it would have looked a lot like that. <laughs> and like I said, this is like, you know, the latest cutting edge thing that the Russians are teaching. The Russians are like the Mac Daddies nowadays when it comes to Photoshop, and that's that's where I learned it. As opposed to the North Koreans. Yeah, the North Koreans suck. If any of you guys ever uh, want to have some fun, Google North Korean Photoshop. They're not real good at it. Anyway. You can use blend modes to composite your pictures. That's that's the coolest thing. You can't in every situation, but if you know how it works, or at least the theory of it, when you run across a situation where it works, you get a better a better looking selection, and it'll make your life a lot easier. Um, I'll give you one more example of the same thing. If I can find it. Yeah, this getting old stuff sucks, man. Not being able to see. Yeah, tell me about it. Try vocals or hell. Anyway, if you look at this guy and this girl, that was the technique that was used to lay her in there. She was originally cut out on a, a gray background. This is my first shot at doing it. 
So it isn't as good as I would have liked it to have been. I'll probably redo it someday. So they weren't a couple? No, they were a couple, but they were shot in a gray, in a, okay. against a gray background in the studio. Okay. And to get her hair in there, you know, I used that technique. Okay, got it. Um, got a couple more for you here. I have a question. Yes. The one you got a picture of her earlier on the motorcycle. Let's do that one. Is that two pictures? Yes. Okay, it looks like they were in his blood yep. in the middle. Yep. How did you do that? I like that. Lair mask. That's yeah. the uh, that's the final picture. So is that red spot? Yeah, it is the sun reflecting off this part of the frame. Okay. Now I added it. Um, I mean that. Well, let me get rid of all the manipulation. You can select all your layers or any number of layers you want in your layer stack and hit Control G and create a group. You see what I did now? I've got all of that in a group. So that's the original picture. Oh, yes. And that's the original spot. Oh. All I did was enhance it some. Um, the reason I wanted to show this was to talk about layer masks and teach layer masks because this is a two picture composite um, using nothing but layer masks or a layer mask. The, uh, the second picture, of course, is the speedometer. And it's basically just laid in there. Well, you know what? Let me just do it from from the start, and that way you guys can see how it's done. So, place embedded, and find the speedometer. This was uh, another one that was just a stock image that was on Google. Of course, I've trimmed it and everything else, which is why I got that weird white, funky background. But I just moved it over to the side like so, and then did a layer mask on it. Um, and I think I did just a white layer mask. Now. Like what I was talking about, this is the same technique that uh, I mentioned uh, to create a, a gradual blur, um, but I'm not going to use it for blur. Use a black and white gradient right on the layer mask. And just paint across the layer mask, and you can see the parts that are white. You see the layer mask down here, the parts that are white will show the parts that are black, it'll hide. And it's really just a matter of playing with that gradient until you get it where you want it. And when I'm sitting around in my underwear, it works a lot better. <laughs> Let me move this slightly. <laughs> I'd have to charge extra for that. <laughs> there you go. You know what? I brought a tutorial just for Tina. Just for Tina. You're going to love it. Okay, so here's my gradient tool. It's better. It's better. There's nothing better than a baseball bat. Oh, I bet you there is. Wait till you see. <coughs> Anyways, that is the idea, and adjust so it works with your your gradient. And if it doesn't, you can brush in. Uh, hitting the D key, D like in David, puts these colors back to default, which is black and white. And remember, X brings white to the front. X again brings black to the front. So what I want to do is hide this part. So I'm going to click on the mask 
making sure that's what I paint on, hit B for my brush, and then get a big gigantic and soft brush. It's 2%. Just give it a couple clicks, and you see it kind of disappears. Now, in the original, And I'm going to explain everything I'm doing because I always get accused of talking too fast and not explaining. The mask and this layer, the speedometer picture, are locked together. Whenever you add a layer mask, it automatically, by default, locks to the, to the picture you're masking. You can unlock it by just clicking on that chain link. And you can lock it by clicking on that chain link again. The reason that you want to unlock it is that using the move tool, which is shortcut V, your keyboard shortcut is V, like in Victory. I can move the mask, or I can click on the picture and move the picture independently of the mask. And again, that's just a matter of getting it adjusted and how you want it. Yes, sir. Can you um, and tell me if this is a stupid way to do it? Um, can you go to the motorcycle picture? Select, use color select, you know, and then set up a mask where you're masking the, you're revealing the motorcycle guy. Yeah. And then move it over to the yeah, other one. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing, but, but the opposite, basically. Um, and it, it really makes no difference. Uh, you may find that it's easier to do that. You may find it's not. Um, so you can move from mask to, to, from one mask, one layer mask to, or move it to a different whole layer. Well, if you, you would it matter, you can just do the opposite on that layer. Right. You can just add a mask here yeah. and then hit the gradient the opposite direction. Okay. Now, in the original composition, the bike was in black and white. So there's the bike. And I'm going to find the black and white adjustment layer, which is that one. Click on it, and you see now the bike is, is black and white. And the only thing that is in color, of course, is the, the speedometer uh, arm. And then you can, you know, play with layers and curves to adjust your brightness and stuff from there. Is that answering your question there, Maggie? Yeah. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a motorcycle. You know, you can use a mask with a gradient to blend anything together. It's just a matter of finding two things that, that will look right together. Uh, this is basically a tutorial that I think I learned it off of one of the Scott Kelby things 10, 15 years ago when I first started doing it. But it, you know, I'm, I'm a biker kind of guy, so it was a, always one that I liked. Uh, now, what I did do in the original aside from using the lens flare filter on that guy, which I never really kind of decided whether I liked it or not, but to give it a sense of motion, I uh, duplicated the motorcycle layer, and again, I made it active and hit, con hit control J, and I have two copies of it. The top copy, oh, I'm sorry, that is the speedometer layer. I did it with both layers, so just watch what happens. The top copy, I go to blur, motion blur and I want it to go from front to back as if it's moving that way. That's way too extreme so I'm going to back down on the amount of motion. And then um, because and I think I mentioned this when you place a picture into another picture it automatically becomes a smart object. That filter that, that's, that motion blur is a smart filter. And it gives you its own layer mask. So now the same thing, just take your gradient tool, going from black to white. Come on, I'm on the I'm on a smart object and Photoshop is telling me you tell me. So you go to the mask and then using that gradient. Ah, that was too much. I turned it all black. Control Z, I'm undoing. So here's the problem. See my colors? They're black and black. And I don't know how that happened, but if I hit D for default, it goes back to black and white. 
Yeah, see what I'm saying? What's happening now? As that mass builds up towards the edge, I get motion to the here and not to here. And if that's not enough for me, I can take the opacity of that layer and kick it down to even reduce it more. It's not quite as important, at least in my eyes, on the speedometer as it is on the Harley. So now again, control J, I'm going to make a copy of the Harley, and I am going to do the same thing. Filter, blur, motion blur. Now I'm going to keep the angle the same so it matches the motion blur on the speedometer. Crank it down just a little bit. Mask that layer. Now this, again, has a smart filter with the mask. So I take the, uh, the gradient tool. Man, I'm going blind. And Make sure I'm on the mask and do a gradient in the opposite direction. That's about right. And then again, just crank down the opacity of that filter layer. Now, the only other thing which I just see now is my, you know what, I'm going to take. And this is a good use for the group. I'm going to take and group together my two speedometer pictures. I've highlighted both speedometers, layers. I'm going to hit Control G, and now I've got a group that is just the speedometers. I'm going to put a layer mask on it. I don't know if you guys can see it, but right in here, there's a line where the two pictures come together, and I've got this mask. So now I'm going to hit my brush, and I'm going to go to black by hitting the X key just hide that line. So basically I've masked the group and hidden that line that separated the two pictures. So now I've got blur to the right on the speedometer, blur to the left on the guy's butt and feet, and both my pictures blended together. Any questions? Okay. Looks like we're not going to have time to do them all tonight. But we're going to do my favorite one, the one I brought especially for Tina. Which means you'll all have to go to Gary's uh, workshop. There you go. I call this one... Uh, I don't have to be. I call this one girly man. <laughs> because there are some guys that are unfortunately not as you know endowed as I am. By, by the good Lord. <laughs> with the physique. You know. And... Don't let that discourage you. You can take pictures of them. You can you can give them a physique. This is meant to teach you not only layers but blend modes. So you get a guy with a desirable fatigue, physique, a guy kind of like me. And <coughs> let's say this guy. His stomach, chest, just him and I could be the same. We feel like brothers. So the first thing you want to do is unlock it so it's not a background layer anymore so you can do all kinds of stuff to go to image adjustment to make it a black and white uh, and actually you know what I'm going to just desaturate it all together which is control shift U for some reason that's not a shortcut I use a lot get your lasso tool and make a selection around the part of the picture that we want to use doesn't have to be exact it can just be a rough selection and since Adam seems to be mi missing in the uh, the chest and ab department, that's the, the part we're going to use. We're going to uh, hit Control J and put that uh, part of that gentleman's body on its own layer. And it looks a little dark to me, so I'm going to give it a levels adjustment and see if I can brighten it up some. Okay. And then I'm going to right click and merge that down because I'm going to carry this part of the, this guy into the other picture and I don't want to take the adjustment layer with me. So I've merged the adjustment layer down into that. Hit the V key for your select, uh, your move tool. Hover over the, the tab up here for that picture. If you hit the shift key when you're placing another picture in, it throws it right in the middle. 
So, the way I do this is to reduce the opacity way down so that I can line it up. And then, by the way, hitting the shift key while you're moving these handles in the corners keeps the picture at the same perspective. If you don't, you know, it can go wonky on you and stuff. If you hit the shift key, it'll keep it at the original perspective. But anyway, in this scenario, I try and line up the nipples and the belly button. Well, just so it kind of looks like it belongs there. Even though Adam is a girly man, he does have nipples and a belly button. So I'm going to make him look just as, as fit and healthy as I am. Okay, so I've got that placed where I want it, and now I am going to use the overlay blend mode, which will get rid of all that gray and basically just give me the contrast. Um, it does mess with the color some because, of course, Adam is a pasty skin kind of guy. But you can play with it and adjust it. And then, again, use a layer mask. So I'm going to commit to that transformation. Put a layer mask on his new abs. Get my B for brush, paint it black. And just cut away the sharp edges, like so. Just using a soft brush. One of the things with Photoshop, in terms of, you know, the, one of the great secrets of Photoshop, to, to doing good Photoshop, is to make it subtle. Um, this is kind of already subtle, but when you're working on your composites, it's something that you definitely want to consider is, you know, is it obviously Photoshop? You know, I could make this a lot more obvious than it is, but again, subtlety, uh, subtlety goes a long way in selling the fake. To make the muscles stand out a little bit more, I'll give it a curves adjustment. Give it a little bit more contrast. You can see like the stomach and chest are coming out a little bit more. And I will clip it to the, to the stomach layer. So there's part of it. i got to get rid of this line up here too. Around his spindly little neck. You're so jealous. Oh yeah, right. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so this is a uh, the 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 trick I was talking about later. I'm hit uh, earlier. I hit the Alt, Control, Shift, E. Now I created one single layer all the way at the top. That <coughs> the flattening of all the layers below. And then, because he's so pathetic. You go into filter, liquefy, and you pick out the bloat tool, because that's what we want to do. We want to make his muscles bloat a little bit. And give him a couple clicks right here, so he gets some hex. Can't get down to the crotch and click it, but. Oh, come on. <laughs> It's a different, 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 different seminar. Different seminar. That's the underwear seminar. So we do right. the, do his little girly shoulders a little bit. Curly shoulders. Give them a little bit of a, you know, give them the incredible. It doesn't work on real people. <laughs> give them the incredible hope. It does work. It's just that you have to reapply it every, every time you take a new picture. <laughs> we'll give them some biceps. Oh my god. He doesn't need biceps. He does not need any work. Give him some forearm. Adam and Him and his husband are very happy together. Okay, so I'm going to commit that. You can see he's gotten a lot more manly. Um, you know, just to show you what I was talking about earlier, I'll hit it with a uh, gradient map. And right now it's a black and white gradient. I don't know why, like I said, I tend to use this one a lot. But. So 
stock up a little bit. Make it more blue and less purple. And of course, you can kind of leave it like that and call it art. Or, um, get your opacity. Actually go to uh, color. The color mode takes it down quite a bit. And then dig your opacity and kick it way down. And again, that just kind of ties everything together a little bit better. And just to show you, it is a subtle difference. And another keyboard shortcut to learn. If you uh, hold down your Alt key and click this little eyeball, you show only the layer that you clicked on. Click it again, you show the whole, all the layers. Hold the Alt key. Yeah, and click on the eyeball. So, switch between before and after again. Yep, that's Girly Man Adam. This is we're here to pump you up, Adam. <laughs> hey, I did it just for you. <laughs> I'm sure you did. <laughs> Gary, how long did you practice on that? Your trousers, something like that, living room by yourself with your cat. About 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> At your store, right? There you go. That's more than the three minutes. Oh, okay. okay, you guys done or you want to do one more? You got a, you got a fast one? Got a cool one, it's not necessarily fast. Now, I, I, yeah. I meant to, sh to or I wanted to show you guys pixel squid. Connected to the internet. Hey, Gary, it's already eight. Oh, that one. yeah, we got till nine, and we just got to announce winners, right? Yeah, we got to draw. We got to announce. What about the one where you had the the person looked like part of them was disintegrating? <laughs> That's a little bit advanced. Oh, okay. Okay, so run a uh, a Google search for black hole. You pull up this. I've got some custom brushes that I've made. I'm like a, a brush fanatic now. So this is like a, a quasar kind of thing. And I'm going to pick a yellow or orange kind of color here. Make sure you aren't trying to sell these pictures you're making with other people's stuff on the internet. It is copyright infringement. Yeah. Even if they're stock? <clears throat> Well, if you pay Unless for the you stock, stock. Yeah, which I buy it for the, with the right license, then yes. Yeah, which I didn't. Um, which lens did you use for the X-wing fire? <laughs> <laughs> so I gave it a couple hits with the quasar looking brush there and the yellow, and go to uh, describe vivid light. Yeah, there you go. Now. And this is uh, where your Pixel Squid comes in. When you when you download and install Pixel Squid, you get this little panel here. And in my <coughs> other class, I'm going to talk about all these panels here because it's some really cool stuff. But that's the Pixel Squid panel. And hopefully, I'm signed in because I'm on the internet. Yeah, there you go. These are all items that I've downloaded from Pixel Squid, and I've either used them in previous composites or you know, downloaded them today. So let's take the uh, blowed up Death Star. And all of those are, uh, are okay to use to sell. Yeah, they're 3D items. And this is what I was talking about before. So you can position them any way you want inside that little panel. And when you click off of it, it positions itself to match inside your composite. You can also use a high resolution version of it, which I just did by clicking on that. And it's downloading to high resolution. Boom, there it is. And I'm going to get out. So I'm going to reduce the size of the half load of Death Star. Put it back behind the. Uh, Plays our light there. Commit to it. Go back to Pixel Squid. Get me some. Yes, sir. Did I understand you correctly that you can rotate the? Yes. 
can you also rotate top to bottom yep. axis? You can move it any way you want. It's easier to see on something like this than uh, on something that's round. But there's my X-wing fighter, and in the fiction squid panel. I don't know if you guys can see it on the TV or not, but yeah, we, yeah, you, know, we can you can see, see all the different positions I, I can get out of it. So I want it to look like. It's, uh, no. Now on a on a normal 3D object that you would use in Photoshop you can but these guys you can't like I said they come with a shadow and a lot of times you've got to mask out and paint out the shadow depending on your composition um, in this case we won't have to so I've got it where I wanted it I hit the high resolution it's downloaded there it is now with pixel squid you can also do the positioning on their website and download a PSD and then just drag it into your composite if your computer maybe isn't as fast, you know, it might be something to do. Um, I like being able to look at the composition while I'm working on it uh, and being able to go back and change it too, have a, you know, second thoughts about it. You can do that in Pixel Squid as long as you have the panel installed. So, rather than do another one, I'm just going to control J, duplicating that layer once I commit to it. When you say commit to it, what do you mean? Well, you press the OK button, button okay. and hit Enter. All right. So Control J, now I've got two X-Wing fighters. You can see where the other one is. So I'm just going to take and transform it, and flip it horizontally. So it's coming in from the other direction. Oops, wrong layer. Bring him in from there, and maybe give him a little bit more of an angle. Again, commit to it by hitting a little check mark there. It's got a little bit more of an angle. And as you can see, these two guys just came in from outer space on the Death Star. Um, now I'm going to do one more thing because I'm going to throw an effect on it. But I've just made a blank layer. Clicking this little guy down here gives you a blank layer. I'm going to go get a paintbrush. And I'm going to get, well, let's say this guy, kind of like a particle brush. Open it way up. Yeah, that might be too much. Yeah, that's definitely going to be too much. That's not the brush that I normally would use. Now I've rushed. <laughs> This one. Yeah. I'll use that one, but I want to do it in white. <coughs> so now, with my basically blur selected, I go to filter, blur, go to radial blur. With radial blur, you can make things spin. You can make them zoom towards the center. I'm going to hit zoom and I'm going to crank up the amount. Hit 45. Yeah, it needs more than that, doesn't it? I want to undo. If I'd done a smart object, I wouldn't have to undo. The blur, radio blur, I'll say. Seven to seven, much better. Use the opacity way down, just to add a little bit of a sense of motion. Uh, I'm going to merge these two X wings together. Oops, had to merge down. It's not going to let me. I mean, yeah, select both of them. Merge layers. So now I've got both X-Wings on one layer, and I'm going to hit them with the same filter, but nowhere near as, as intense. Blur, radial blur, that one's back down to like 10, and I'll try 15. A little too much. 
do, and I'm skipping a step. Actually, I want to duplicate that layer, Control J. Now I've got two layers of X-wings, and I'm going to redo that same radio blur. Put a mask on the one that's blurred. The mask is white, so I'm going to take black, get my brush, go to a normal brush, again, 0%, at 80%. So I've got a little bit of a motion blur on the edge of the X wings. And this guy can come down here. Um, I think in the original one I actually did one and, and that's why I, I, again, if I wasn't brushing I'd find the right brush and do a black layer with those stars and then do the regular blur on the stars like you see in the window of the, the fighters in Star Wars as you're going, you know the stars and air trails. But anyway, that kind of gives you an idea of, uh, of how that, that composition got put together using 3D objects out of pixel split. You can get 3D objects from a number of different sites, but those are true Photoshop 3D items, which will give you the advantages that Steve's talking about, where you can individually light them and have a lot better control of the light and all. But they're much more difficult to work with. The uh, 3D panel in, uh, in Photoshop can be challenging if you've not used it before. So before we say to hell with this, has anyone got any other questions? Pixel Squid, how, how much is that? It is for real. Right. That's the best part about it. And if you go to it, like I said, the, the, the amount of stuff that they've got on there, this, you know, most people say, well, I would never use it. The stuff they've got on there uh, is insane. Um, fountain pens. <coughs> you know, I did a picture of the girl the other day shooting an arrow. Well, the arrow she had was a field point arrow. So I ran a pixel squid search for arrow and it came up with broadhead. So I just downloaded an arrow, brought it down the side, laid it in the picture where the field point was. Now she's shooting the broadhead. Um, the, uh, like I said, their library of stuff is just insane. Uh, a lot of it is geared towards industrial stuff. Um, so you'll see like, you know, construction equipment, medical equipment, you know, that type of junk. But, uh, they're obviously Star Wars fans. There's tons of Star Wars stuff. Uh, a lot of Ferraris and race cars and that kind of stuff. <coughs> a bunch of boats. Uh, you, you saw there was a uh, GoPro camera. Uh, the ones I've used a lot, for example, are like the Splash. Um, you know, the, the composite that I had looking up there, the uh, Martini glass with the Splash. And this is, you know, the interface that you would use uh, on the website. You know, you can position it like you want it right on the website and then download a PSD or download a paint file of it. And when you download it, it's going to be stationary. Right. Or you can choose the Add to Photoshop option, but you have to have that pixel squid panel installed to use that, um, which I've, I've found no reason not to use it. It doesn't slow down performance or anything else. So those are some very basic composites and some very basic techniques to have fun with your pictures. Um, those techniques can be used on, you know, any number of pictures. It doesn't have to be a bike and a speedometer, you know, it can be butterflies and flowers. Um, but you can blend them together artistically using that mask or using a blend mode. No other questions? Okay.